Hi, my name is Linda Zins Adams, and I'm the Shamanan Global Scholars Coordinator and the World Language Department Chair at Archbishop Moeller High School here in Cincinnati, Ohio. We're an all boys Catholic college prep school. And in the last eight years, we have really started connecting globally. We have AP in every language that we offer, Spanish, Latin, German, and French. And since the addition of all the AP courses, we have jumped on the global seal when it was first launched. And since 2018 and 2019, we have nearly 60 students who have achieved one of the global seals of bioliteracy. This is incredible. At first, the students didn't know what it is. And now we have parents and, and freshmen coming to us saying, how do I get the seal? And so we've established in, the, in our program that we start talking about it early on in freshman year so they understand that the path they need to take. And here at Archbishop Moeller, what we do is that we encourage all our students to graduate from Moeller. We require that all students take at least two years of a world language. Most of the students after two years are, are willing and they're highly encouraged by our counselors to go on to a level three. And if they're in level three, they know that they have just go one more year, not only to get college credit through AP, which allows them to get the seal, but to get the seal in, in February is something that we do special here. For students who apply in the winter, we offer testing through the STAMP Avant program that they can come in on a Saturday and try to get the early path. And so if they achieve one of the global seals early on, then we recognize them. If they miss the opportunity for taking the exam or they just don't do what they need to achieve it, they have the AP as a backup. So we want to provide them as many paths as they can so they can get the seal. They know that this is very important and it's valuable to have on their transcript. So this is something I'm very proud of. And as the Global Scholars Coordinator, we are coordinating that they, they do things outside the community, have global experiences abroad. We're working through this pandemic to make sure that we can go to Berlin for the Global Summit. We are doing some special things with our Global Scholars so that they can maybe attend the Global Summit in Berlin. We want to take them to some areas so they can address the peace problems that we have in the world and then at the summit be put on international teams. And so students that have French, German, Spanish, or Latin, maybe make special connections with their team members from all over the world and, and be put in a situation where they have to solve something and use their critical skills. And then when they come back, they have this experience that will broaden so much of their horizons and then apply it to a capstone later in their senior year. I am very, very proud to have these students share their language journey with us today. We have five students, two of which who have already achieved the global seal of biliteracy in their sophomore year for Latin and for Spanish. And after they achieve the seal, they have continued their language learning in the same language and in another language. We have three students who will share their experience from grade school through their senior year and how they are working towards attaining the global seal of biliteracy in their senior year. So please listen to our students as they take us upon their language journey from grade school to the Global Seal of Biliteracy. Just like, like most kids growing up here in Ohio, I uh, just spoke English at home and throughout grade school I took, I took Spanish but I never really took it um, too seriously. But my freshman year I got a job working at a local soccer store and we had quite a um, quite a customer base that was from the Hispanic population here in Cincinnati, which is quite big. And when they came in, like they had, they didn't really have the greatest English speaking skills. And I ever since like throughout, I've always been interested in languages growing up. Like I loved hearing foreign languages, and like there I was exposed to a lot of Spanish. And I was frustrated because I. Uh, I couldn't really communicate well with them. I, w I really, really wanted to be able to speak with them, but I quickly figured out that I couldn't. So I, the spring of my freshman year, I took it upon myself. I was like, yeah, I want to try this. Like I, I had tried it in the past. I tried it during grade school, but I was like in this, through this calendar year from January to the, by the end of December, I made a deal with myself that 
I will be conversationally fluent in Spanish by the end of the year. It was just kind of like a New Year's resolution. And I, I worked hard, I took it upon myself. And like that freshman, uh, by the time I finished freshman year, I finished Spanish too. And by the time that summer, like I worked very hard that summer. I used a few different language learning programs. Um, I used Duolingo like a lot of kids, but I also found a great app called Pimsleur, which really helped my speaking skills. And I was originally placed in the third level of Spanish, but I, I, went, I told my teacher that I feel really confident and I feel like I can move up to the AP level. And it went really, really well. And also that year I applied to the Zaragoza Exchange, which I'm very lucky to have been a part of. It was, I was, it was an incredible experience in January. Luckily I was able to take it before the, the pandemic hit in March. And yeah, like I worked, I worked very hard to speak only Spanish with my family in Spain. Luckily, they didn't have the, didn't want to speak too much English with me. So I was also incredibly lucky for that to happen. So I think that Zaragoza exchange was, it was a catalyst in helping me, um, kind of take my Spanish speaking skills to the next level. And by the time I came back, I was able to take the. Global Seal by literally by literacy exam. Um, I I feel like I did pretty well on it, and I was lucky to get the Global Seal by literacy. And as soon as I after I got that seal, I took it upon myself. Was hey, now that I have Spanish, I think I can take on another Romance language. So I took up French, and yeah, it was great. Like this summer, um, since the coronavirus pandemic, I. I used Pimsleur once again to um, learn French, and yeah, it's been going really great. And I think me personally, the reason why I chose to learn a language like Spanish and French was because they're such great, like big global languages, just like English. Um, I think that when I, like I, I never did it to just put it on my college resume. Like I, I wanted to do it because I think by learning a language with like such a big language like Spanish is, you're opening yourself up to like, like I told myself like now I can speak Spanish, I can open myself, I can have, I can interact with a billion more people than I could if I was only speaking English. I'm opening myself up to, I'm up to Central America, I'm opening myself up to Europe, I'm opening myself up to South America. I think with French, it's the same thing, I open myself to so many, so many more people I can make interactions, make friends with, and I can open myself up to um, like Africa, I open myself up to Asia. And yeah, I think it's one of the great things about languages. I started my language journey in elementary school where I took Spanish and French as like just beginner courses. We didn't really learn much. But in junior high, my journey really began when I took two years of Spanish. I came to Muller and I did not succeed when I took the Spanish placement exam. And that ended up making me make a hard decision to drop Spanish completely and take German. And then I took German one freshman year and sophomore year. I moved to California where I took Spanish because they did not offer German there. And luckily enough, the teachers there recognized my talent and they said that I could start in uh, Spanish 2. And so I totally skipped out of Spanish 1. And then when I came back that next year, I wanted to go back into the German program, but I didn't really have that chance since I had missed out on a whole semester of learning. So I wanted to study abroad in Germany. And that chance was also taken away when COVID-19 hit. So over the summer, I had to find a lot of resources to learn German and take that German 3 placement exam and skip German 2. So I used Netflix, I used Duolingo, and I used a lot of podcasts, and I used the textbook definitely. And it really helped me to skip that class. And when I got here this year, I got to pass that exam, and I got to uh, feel just in place with the rest of the people in my class. And this year, I'm taking Spanish 3 as well as German 3. I was able to fit that in my schedule. 
And next year I plan to take the AP uh, exam, the AP classes for both languages so that I can get two seals of biliteracy. Uh, and then after that in college, I think it would be cool to maybe minor in either of those two languages or at least study abroad. I am a native Spanish speaker. My family is from Mexico. And so I grew up with Spanish my whole entire childhood. And so in elementary school, I naturally did, took a Spanish class because it was required for my elementary school and middle school. And I really enjoyed that. Definitely strengthened um, my language, even after like speaking it at home. And it got to high school and I had a decision to either stick with Spanish or take a new language. And I wanted to further educate myself about different languages, different cultures. So I decided that German seemed like a really different language and a really unique culture. So I went with German. And I've stuck with German all four years. I have really enjoyed it. I've practiced through Duolingo. Um, cla during class, we have great discussions, and we study really deeply with, through texts and videos. And uh, I think that's really prepared me in order to take both AP exams and to achieve the seals for both languages. In college, I will be studying anthropology. and. Having taken the AP exams and having these seals will really help me um, throughout my career and it will give me opportunities to get jobs because learning languages is really important in a career that's about culture and history and the ways that people have lived. So I feel like having those two languages I will be able to thrive in the workforce. So growing up, I was always homeschooled up until high school. Um, through the age of preschool to sixth grade, I went to a co-op called Classical Conversations, or better known as CC. And they really focused on a classical approach to learning. And so obviously with that, we were um, taught Latin. Through that, um, I was able to get a very good grammatical foundation. Uh, we learned the um, all of the verb conjugations and noun declensions and the endings that correspond with those, which gave me a very good uh, grammatical structure to work behind uh, and that would serve me well later. Um, in seventh and eighth grade, I switched co-ops. Uh, I went to a co-op called PEP, which was a little bit more um, structured like a private school than my previous co-op. And so there I took Latin one and Latin two, um, seventh and eighth grade respectively. And from that, I was able to get more vocabulary and, again, build on that grammatical uh, foundation that I had received earlier with some more uh, complex grammatical, uh, some complex grammatical uh, structure. Um, and then, so, because of that, freshman year, uh, molar, I was able to test straight into Latin III. Um, I took the biliteracy test uh, both my freshman and sophomore year um, so I was able to finish Latin in two years um, and both years I earned the global seal. Now I'm taking Spanish online in the summer at UC 
and that'll really help translate into what I want to do when I grow up. Uh, I want to get into the FBI, and so knowing multiple languages, uh, such as Spanish, which is a very popular one, is really going to help me get the job that I really want. Um, as well, I would like to try and uh, take Arabic through college or um, after college even, and really continue um, my lifelong language journey. So I went to a grade school that was very excelled in global experiences. We had what was called the friendship journey and that was, that was my foundation for language learning. Um, every year they would take a delegation of students from 6th to 8th grade to a foreign country and I had the luck of going to Hungary um, and that, that was really what started my love of travel and uh, cultural experiences. Um, and that, that kind of helped me get into the uh, Shamanah Global Scholars Program. And the Shamanah Global Scholars Program has really excelled me to be a person who knows a lot about global experiences. And uh, I'm well versed in global experiences because of that. So I took I decided to take German because my sister took German at Ursuline Academy and she convinced me to take it because she said it was one of the best classes she had, she's taken. So taking German really helps you stand out not only on a college resume but with job applications, with uh, just in general. When, when you're talking to people, it, it helps you stand out as a person and you, you know that you took a different path than most people do. Um, so I plan to major in education in college and then hopefully after college I'm going to apply to the Peace Corps. And right now I'm taking German, AP German and Spanish 1. And I'm taking it less for the the language learning and more for the basis of language learning because learning your first language is the hardest language to learn. The second, third, fourth language you learn is so much easier and that's one reason I'm taking two, lang two foreign languages is because when I do join the Peace Corps, if I go to Thailand, if I go to China, if I go to uh, anywhere in South America, anywhere in Africa, I can use those language skills and learn the language of the place I'm going to so much faster and so much easier and that'll really give me an edge uh, in, in my career. With the Peace Corps, I am doing my capstone for Shamana Global Scholars on Peace Corps relations and how the United States benefits from having the Peace Corps. And the capstone as a part of the Shamana Global Scholars Program gives me access to resources that I never would have accessed if I wasn't a part of it. And that, that also gives me an edge. And that gives me more of a global experience to help when I'm applying to the Peace Corps. So I'm going for the Seal of Biliteracy for German. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get in early enough to go for Spanish as well, but having the seal of biliteracy for German will look, not only will it look good on a college resume, it'll help me stand out as a person and as an applicant. So I'm the, the Shamanan Global Scholars Coordinator, as well as the World Language Department Chair at Moeller High School. 
And I'm sitting here with Joshua Wellen, and he has taken on a remarkable uh, big role in what we do with the Global Scholars. And so one thing that he is now doing is taking the students to the capstone, which we heard Noah Lorbach talk about. So Joshua, I would like you to talk about specifically what you're doing with Noah and the other students in the capstone and give, give us an idea of what this is about. Of course, yeah, yeah. Um, so specifically with Noah, right, he is taking a look at the Peace Corps uh, because that's something that he wants to do, um, not necessarily a career path, but definitely a, a post-graduation path. And so he is taking a look at the Peace Corps and making some um, research and some connections with the Peace Corps and how it helps us with uh, international diplomacy. And he will be working with both an internal mentor and an external mm -hmm. mentor, right? So right now, uh, there's actually somebody in the social studies department uh, who is in AmeriCorps uh, who will be helping him mm -hmm. out and kind of giving him some guidance as far as the research aspect of things uh, and, and taking a look at, in the past, what Peace Corps may have done uh, with international relationships. Mm -hmm. And then Noah wants to take a look at, you know, how his path is going to end up um, manifesting and so we'll connect him with an external mentor mm -hmm. from the actual Peace Corps uh, somebody who's either currently involved or has been involved so that that person can guide him through some more practical applications mm -hmm. so that becomes then this uh, conglomeration of you know the the past and the research right um, and then the sort of present future and so you're blending a theoretical approach right to the Peace Corps with a very practical approach as he plans for you know how can I have a global impact and looking into you know what might that global impact be and what can I expect um, this project to become if that makes sense yeah and so as you guide the students um, the the schedule that we have what are the good aspects about our block av schedule i mean where does this take place and when do you have the contact with the students and what does it involve for the students as far as building communication skills and responsibility so um starting with some of the potential um drawbacks of the schedule is, is that this isn't a traditional class and so they're not in a traditional classroom where there's that same structure that they're used to and the great thing about that right if you spin it the other way is they are forced into an environment where they have to adapt mm -hmm. right and so um, because this isn't a traditional class where they come during one of the bells mm -hmm. of the day um, then they are forced to coordinate with me right and so um, you know, one student might be available during end blocks and another one might be available during the mornings or the afternoons. Mm -hmm. And so it forces them to be sort of a project manager in a sense. And mm -hmm. so they have to figure out, um, one, what is the pace at which my project is moving? And B, or two, sorry, two, uh, what sort of support do I need? And mm -hmm. so um, then they do a little bit of self-reflection two of us meet and they decide, okay, here's a regular basis, right, at, at which we will meet, right? And so for one student, right, he might need for me to meet with him once a week. Mm -hmm. For another student, he might decide, okay, I'm a little bit more autonomous. I have a better sense of direction with where I am. And so we only need to meet once every other week, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, the ability to manipulate his schedule is, is a good thing in the sense that it forces him to to use his time management skills mm -hmm. um, and, and to communicate with me mm -hmm. and also then with his mentors because he also has to keep that piece together where he's meeting with his mm -hmm. internal mentor and his external mentor uh, who are guiding him through the project and other aspects. Um, and so students get a very realistic uh, depiction of what it's like to have to manage mm -hmm. a, a project, mm -hmm. right? Where you're working with other people. Mm -hmm. um, and in this case, working with two of us who work here in the hallways okay. of Muller, and then also somebody who's working outside of the hallways of Muller. And hence the name of this, Global Seal of Biliteracy, that these kids are, are demonstrating a proficiency not only in a second language, but they're growing their proficiency and becoming better at communication in their own language, which is such an asset to, to them later in the job market and what they need to do. 
And so our schedule, you mentioned in block. And so an in block is for our juniors and seniors when they get released at 1 p.m. And our, and our freshmen and sophomores stay where they do like a study hall and they can get help from other teachers. It gives them that freedom. But our juniors and seniors have a little bit more flexibility to go do community service or be able to do the capstone. Um, we teach on an 80 block, 90 minutes, as, as, as we've talked about before. For language, it's good. Um, we have some some pieces where you can see our teachers in the classroom with the students. In 90 minutes, you can get a, get well in depth of a, of a topic, which is great. But the bad part is it is that we don't see them consistently every day. And and that's, I think, a part of why, you know, for our language growth, it inhibits them. Um, for me, for German in particular, um, I'm basically losing a quarter where I used to have on traditional schedule that full contact every day. Um, there's some benefits of meeting every day. And so to build their proficiency, to get to that intermediate mid, that higher proficiency of language in the language part is difficult. But we have a lot of nice pieces here where we're growing their language and getting them ready to communicate in the real world in English. And I think this capstone has been a wonderful addition. Um, we have one student that mentioned he was doing online Spanish because they can't fit everything in. As you know, you teach some electives. And so it's a challenge to, yes. to kind of decide what to do. So not every global scholar is going to do the capstone. So I think we recently just met with the new class. We have about 26 students who are starting out. Um, they have to demonstrate a willingness to push themselves to take honors in AP courses. Um, and we, we want them to maintain a 3.7 unweighted and then you and I are working together to check the reflection. Can you share a little bit about those reflections, what we're doing with those, the internal and the external? But for the reflections, that's the foundational piece for, in particular, the freshmen and the sophomores. Um, so kind of working backwards, the senior year is where you actually do the, the project for mm -hmm. Capstone. Junior year is more of the research aspect of it. Freshman and sophomore year really serves as a good foundation where students have the opportunity uh, to sort of explore different areas that they might be interested uh, in pursuing a capstone project. Mm -hmm. And so it's a good time. You know, they have to do some, some external speakers. They have to go to some internal speakers. And, and maybe they tailor those experiences mm -hmm. uh, to be able to get some insight into different areas that they might be interested in. Most of our current capstone seniors uh, started off with you know two, three, or four different areas that they mm -hmm. might be interested in uh, in pursuing, and so it's nice for the freshmen and for the sophomores uh, to maybe be able to get some experience in different fields, mm -hmm. and so that way by the time that they hit that junior year, senior year, they've already decided mm -hmm. you know I, I really am interested in three areas, but mm -hmm. here's the area that I'm most interested in, right? Um, and maybe even through you know either mission trips mm -hmm. um, or the speakers that they're going to or some other opportunity that they have uh, in, in freshman or sophomore year, they might even get some hands-on application. Mm -hmm. And that, again, just serves as that foundation so that by the time that they get to the research phase, they really have uh, a firm idea of where they want to go with this and, and what they might be interested in pursuing. Right? What, I, what I like about it is they, they go out and they see different ways people present information. They get exposed to different speakers because part of the capstone is they'll have to present it in their senior year. We do presentations all the time in our world language classes. That's one of the big components. And so they, I think, grow so much as a presenter, as a communicator. And so what, what is so great is that with, when we didn't have the pandemic, that they could go out and, and go on a university setting and see a speaker or in a different environment and bring that back. And I think that's very powerful. You know, we have the mentors, we have, um, all these, these support systems in there. Um, you mentioned the mission trips and we offer a lot of global experiences. We're trying to make sure the Global Summit takes place through EF. Um, you've taken uh, part of a mission trip as well? For the first four years, yes, I've been down to Appalachia mm -hmm. um, this, this past summer because of the pandemic, it didn't happen. Um, but yeah, I've been down to West Virginia and we, mm -hmm. we've served with Matthew 25 Ministries. So not only are they being exposed to their immediate community, we're exposing the outside community, and then we have the global experiences. Um, Stephen Thibodeau mentioned the Zaragoza Exchange. I take students to Germany every other year and we offer the Friendship Exchange. And we have um, our engineering um, program. They go to Guatemala and they do some things there that connect to the curriculum. 
and we also have the service trip to El Salvador. And those have been very powerful where the students get to apply their language skills if they're learning Spanish, or if they're not, they get to go. If I've had students who have participated in those, those trips to Latin America and they weren't learning Spanish, but they did it anyway. So I think what we're doing at Moeller is incredible. Um, and it fits everything that we see with this global seal by letter C. And so I wanna thank you for, for sharing this journey that um, these students were able to share and what we're doing to, to guide them along. And I think we're gonna see some incredible um, global leaders. So thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. So we have heard from these remarkable students from Archbishop Moeller and their language journey. So many of them shared how they plan to use the Global Seal to have an impact on when they apply for jobs and what it will do for them later in their careers. This is a wonderful program and I am so proud to be a part of it and be partnering with the Global Seal Biliteracy program that this is making them have actual global cred. This is so incredible that the students who once started learning a language now have something that will stay permanently with them. And it's not just an award or a certificate. It is something that means more to them that they achieve these remarkable things in a language, are connecting with people on the job, and later when they reach out into the community and go global, they will have the skills that will take them far. And I am so proud that these students, that they were able to come and share this journey with all of us. Thank you.